welcome to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens home safari. My name is Colleen, and I'm here with Alicia and Mark, the humans, and we have CL, the ocelot. We're part of the Cat Ambassador Program here at the Cincinnati Zoo, so what better to bring you guys for home safari today than one of our cats. Now, today I'm here to tell you a little bit about ocelots, CL, and of course, I will try to leave some time to answer your questions. So what we're gonna do is we're going to talk about ocelots. We're gonna talk a little bit about their natural history and their adaptations. Then I'll sort of go into CL, the individual, tell you a little bit about her personality and her story here at the Cincinnati Zoo. And then of course, type of questions. Now the first thing that you'll notice when you see CL is that she looks like a Domestic cat, but a lot of differences. I'm sure if you have a domestic cat at home, you're going to be able to pick out those differences and similarities. So while you're watching this, I want you to really look at those things and say, hey, does my cat at home have that or not? We're going to talk a little bit about adaptations first. Now, the ocelot is a nocturnal predator. She's a carnivore that is native to the rainforests of Central and South America. Predominantly. They have a pretty wide range though, and then they can live in brush habitat and even have a range that goes up as far as South Texas here in the United States, which is pretty cool to think about having these guys native to the United States. Pretty uh, exotic looking cat. Now I mentioned that they're nocturnal, so let's talk a little bit about those adaptations that she has that make her a really great nocturnal predator. We know nocturnal means that she's out predominantly during the day. And we know that adaptations are things that you have on the body or you have the ability to do that help you to survive in your environment. So if you're surviving in a nighttime environment, you're gonna need a few key adaptations. As a predator, you're gonna need really big eyes. Think of all of the nighttime predators that you know and can remember, things like cats or owls. They're usually gonna have those big eyes <laughs> because they're taking in as much light as possible to be able to oh. take in all that moonlight so that they can see what they're hunting. Another great nocturnal adaptation that she has is those long whiskers. Whiskers are a great adaptation that ocelots and a lot of other animals, especially cats, have to be able to feel tiny movements in their environment and to be able to figure out where they can squeeze their body into without having to uh, get stuck. Now lastly, one thing I want you to notice, and this is probably where you're going to tell a big difference between your pet at home, your pet house cat, and CL, is that she has a pretty awesome coat. She has a darker colored coat that's going to help her to blend into the night. And she's also going to have a great pattern, and that's good camouflage. A lot of different types of animals have camouflage, depending on where they live and what types of surroundings that they need to blend into. But your cat at home doesn't really need to blend in, do they? So they have lots of different colors, stripes, patterns, and uh, variations, whereas the ocelot's are always going to look like this, with lots of spots to be able to help them to blend in and a dark color that's really gonna help them blend in at night. Now let's talk about her being an adapted predator or carnivore. So being a carnivore means that you eat meat and cats especially are just meat eaters. They're what we call obligate carnivores, which is just sort of a big word for they have to eat meat in order to survive. She has a lot of very cool adaptations that are gonna help her to be a good hunter, a good carnivore and a good predator. And she's showing off one of them right now, and that's her climbing ability. Now, Ciel here is 19 years old. They have a lifespan that's pretty similar to that of an average house cat. So being 19 years old and still climbing up that uh, pole was really impressive. We'll see if she'll do it again in just a little bit, but that's pretty hard for her. She's grandma age at this point. But what that's going to do as an ocelot's adaptation to help them to be a good hunter is they can climb up trees looking for things that they'd want to eat up in the tops of the canopies, 
or they can climb a controlled climb down like you were able to see her do just a minute ago. That helps them to look down at the rainforest floor as if she might want to eat as well. Now in the wild, ocelots eat primarily rodents or small mammals, but they're not very picky eaters at all. In fact, they've been seen eating birds, uh, they've been seen eating fish, they have been seen eating pretty much anything that they can get their paws on. In fact, they do have the ability to catch prey that is up to four times their size. Think of how strong this cat must be to be able to take down prey that's four times her size. It's pretty strong. Now what you saw her playing with earlier, that orange ball, that's just one of her toys. Because she's not spending all of her time searching and searching and uh, really having to work for hunting, we want to give her opportunities to play and to sort of problem solve and <laughs> be able to figure out her environment in a way that we call enrichment. Now, because she's not really having to struggle out in the wild, doesn't mean that she doesn't need her mind to have a lot of time to play and think and figure things out. So that's why we give our animals enrichment every day because nobody likes to be bored. I'm sure you guys don't. And having toys and different things to see and do is just as much important for our animals here at the Cincinnati Zoo as it is for you guys all at home. It's always fun to have something new to play with or something fun to figure out like a puzzle. Now this is a really cool puzzle feeder that she has right here. It has one of her favorite foods at the zoo, which is a frozen mouse. Remember, she's a carnivore, so she does have to eat meat, and frozen prey is just about her favorite thing. But she's going to have to do something right now that she's uh, that was similar to what she would have to do in the wild. Now there's not little suet feeders with frozen mice in the wild, of course, but she would have to figure out how to get a mouse out of a burrow. Maybe she would have to figure out how to get prey out of a old uh, decaying log. She would have to use her brain a lot. We call that cognitive thinking. But all that really means is that she has to use her brain to solve a lot of problems and learn. She also has to figure out how to use her body, which is really fun uh, for our person operating the camera to try to move around and figure out exactly what CL is going to do next. Now we talked a little bit about CL's adaptations or ocelots in general, but I want to give you a second to talk about CL as an individual because she is really fun. She's so fun to work with. She's part of our cat ambassador program. And what that means is that she spends her entire life uh, doing programming and educational venues to be able to teach people about ocelots and about ocelot conservation. She has a pretty unique backstory. She was actually a frozen embryo implanted into a surrogate ocelot mom, which is really important work that our crew scientists do. And she was the first wild or exotic cat, uh, the first exotic cat to have a successful frozen embryo um, which is actually how she gets her name. CL means to be born again. Yay, CL, you got that mouse. Great job. So to be born again is Mayan, uh, means C, or that's what CL means. And uh, it's because she was the first little stage of life, and then she was frozen and then became life again in her surrogate mother, who lived here at the zoo as well. All right, well, I'm going to see if we have any questions, which we have a ton, and I'm so glad you guys do because CL's awesome, and we love answering questions about her. So the first question I got is, how big will she get? Well, she is 19 years old. She is uh, as big as she'll ever get now. Now, that's not to say that all ocelots are this size. There is a uh, subspecies of ocelot called the Brazilian ocelot, and males of that subspecies can get about two times this big. CL subspecies is generic. So this is about their size, but they can get up to about 30 pounds. I also got the, whoo, yeah, another fun toy. I also got the fun, uh, another question that says, how are they related to cheetahs? Well, to be completely honest, 
They share the same family, which is the cat family, or felidae, because they're felines or felids. But after that, that's really where a lot of those similarities in genetics and, as you can see, similarities in adaptations are going to split off. So they're in the cat family, but not very much more related to cheetahs than that. How fast can they run? Now, that's a really good question, especially for us, because we also work with cheetahs in our department. And I'll tell you that ocelots are really quick, but they're not nearly as fast as cheetahs. We know that cheetahs can run up to 70 miles per hour, and I don't know exactly how fast ocelots can run, but I'd say it's around 25 to 30 miles per hour at their fastest, and that's still a lot slower than cheetahs. Now, Ciel has lived at the zoo her entire life. Remember, she was born at the zoo. She was sort of created uh, in our crew lab. So that was one question. How long has she lived at the zoo? She's lived at the zoo her entire life. In fact, all of our ambassadors were either born at our zoo or born at another zoo and then raised here by us and will live there their entire life. And that's something that's really important for uh, the Cincinnati Zoo and the Cincinnati Zoo's cat ambassador department is that we're making sure that these animals have full quality care for their entire life. All right, well, I also have an, ooh, another good question. What is their closest relative? They're closely related to animals like Marvies, which is an Afro, it's a almost twin. They look very similar. We're working on getting some more questions. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's so fun to be able to have you guys tune in remotely and be able to share our animals with us. We're here working every day at the Cincinnati Zoo to make sure our animals are getting quality care, even through all of these weeks. So being able to not only take care of our animals, but do what we love and share these animals with you guys is so important and so fun. And I really appreciate our entire zoo community appreciates you guys tuning in and still supporting what we do and supporting our animals as well. Looks like we're getting a few more questions coming in. Yeah, a couple questions like how much food do they eat a day? Ah, now that's a really good question. How much food do they eat a day? Now this is going to vary and it's going to be a little bit different from ocelots that are going to be hunting versus the ocelots that are here in our care and management at the Cincinnati Zoo. At the Cincinnati Zoo, she eats probably maybe three quarters of a pound of food a day. Now this is going to be made up of raw meat, prey, fish, mice, uh, and sometimes other novel uh, meat that is going to be really nutritious and delicious for her. But if they were to be hunting, again, they could probably have these big meals if they were able to catch something really big and then sort of not hunt for a while. That's just really dependent on how much they are hunting and what types of things they're hunting. Now, you'll see her playing with some of her toys right now and also rubbing on it. That's something that cats do. I'm sure you've seen your cats at home do it, but our animals at the zoo do as well. When they smell something they like, they love to rub on it. It looks like Ciel just looked like she got called out. I was like, oh, I wasn't doing anything. So we got a question of what's the best time of day to see her? Well, if she were an uh, animal out in her native range, you'd really probably never see them. They're out at night. They like being in closed cover. But if you're at the zoo, seeing a CL is going to be something uh, where you can only see her during programming time. But there are other ocelots that live at the zoo, and they live in our night hunters' building. They have special lighting in there that creates a dark, uh, a dark ambiance so that the animals that are nocturnal, like CL, remember that means out at night, they can feel comfortable to be out and exploring their habitat. Ooh, I got the question, what's her, who's her favorite zookeeper? I'm gonna have to say that it's Alicia. I love working with CL too, and I might be a close second, but Alicia has worked with her for 14 years, 15 years. And so being an 18 year old cat, 19 year old cat, who's having a really good time <laughs> scent marking on her toy, really rubbing on it. Oh, look, it stinks. Uh, I think that Alicia is gonna, gonna have to win that one. That's Alicia. <laughs> And then how many spots are on their coat on average? That is a fantastic question that I don't know the answer to. 
So, still frame it right now and count the spots. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, their spots are really interesting. Her pattern is really uh, a lot of different types of spots. You'll see she has nice closed ones. She has ones that are a little bit more open with um, dots in the middle. We call those rosettes. Those are really um, beautiful spot patterns, very similar to a Jaguar's coat. And then she also has some spots that have molded into stripes on her tail and on her neck and face. So to be able to count all that and all the different ones would be pretty hard. Two spots that I want to point out though are the white ones on the backs of her ears. That's strategic. Those white spots are going to be false eyes. And they're also really great indicators to her ear placement. Ear placement is a really great way to know how an animal is feeling. If you guys have pets at home, or cats at home specifically, I'm sure you've noticed that if their ears are pressed back, that's a good indicator that they're not happy about something. If their ears are fully forward, they're alert and really investigating their environment. And if they're sort of relaxed, then that means that they are, well, relaxed. So having those uh, white spots on the back of the ear help other animals to not only feel like they know the communication that the animal is giving, but it also is going to act as a set of fake eyes so that other animals might be confused about what position this animal is looking. And that's really great for camouflage and for hunting as well. Um, we had another good question. It's two parts about two training. Parts. First, they want to know how hard it is to train a large cat sure. species. And then they also have an eight-year-old at home that wants to become a really good house cat trainer. I want to know if you have any tips for them. Absolutely. So I'd say that training a big cat or an exotic cat is a little bit difficult just because of the types of animals they are. It takes a lot of time and it takes a big commitment to knowing these animals and knowing their individual personalities as well as their species personalities. You can see uh, CL right now rubbing on a perch where birds have sat. So it must have really fun smells on it. And you can see she's really rubbing on that. Um, so other than that, though, to be able to train cats is really just the same basic principles of animal training in general. If you guys at home have worked on training with your dog, we really use the exact same types of techniques as far as positive reinforcement, operant learning, and doing a lot of... Uh, relationship building, and desensitization as well. Now, for anybody at home that's really wanting to work with training their house cats or their dogs, this is a great time to do it if you're at home a little bit more than usual because one of the biggest things to be able to uh, have when you're training an animal is time and patience. Consistency is the other biggest part. And what I uh, recommend that you do first and foremost before you start training with your animal at home is to find out what is something really, really positive that can act as a reward, reinforcement, reinforcement, or basically like a payment for the types of behaviors you're asking for. Now, whether that be a treat, a toy, some dogs usually like getting scratches as reinforcements or rewards, uh, see all not so much. She prefers the food, as you guys saw earlier. Now, those are really great questions, and I absolutely love it. All right. Well, again, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Gardens Home Safari. We have loved sharing our ocelot with you. CL has had a blast being out here, smelling everything, seeing everything. You know, this might be fun for you guys at home, but it's super fun for our animals to get out, see new things, and enjoy their new spaces as well. This is fun enrichment for them. So we thank you guys for tuning in and having the interest in tuning in because not only is it uh, great for you guys at home, it helps us share our passions, and it allows for our animals to have fun and novel opportunities as well. Now, I do want to say, if you're loving this, we are hoping to uh, have... Three o'clock tomorrow is going to be Mow the Sloth. So sloth lovers out there, mark your calendars, set an alarm, three o'clock, log in, and we'll have more animals for you on our home safari program. Thanks, guys. Bye.